Hello there, this is Sue from Sue's Paper Creations, and today I've got a very exciting card for you made with the um, Carols of Christmas uh, bundle. So this is a bundle that is um, was released early um, this year for Christmas. It contains this beautiful stamp set, Carols of Christmas, as well as um, the front card builder thinlet. So here's some of them here and I've got two gorgeous trees that I'm going to show you in a minute that are also in this set. So some really cool ideas. Um, I previously posted a video showing some of the ideas that I had made with the cards. This here was one of the cards in the videos and I had a couple people ask me if I could explain how to do this background. So I got a little bit creative with it and um, made a second version, same thing, same background, just on designer series paper. And so I thought I would share that version with you today. So um, I'm going to get started. We are going to be actually creating a um, our own stencil using the thinlets. So what you will need for this card is going to be of course the bundle which is the thinlets and the stamp set. I'm going to be using um, in this card here cherry cobbler um, and early espresso are the inks that I'm going to be using. You're going to want to bring in some of our new embossing paste. I love this product. It is so fun to work with so I will show you that. Um, you're going to need some dazzling diamonds glitter which is our super fine glitter as well as adhesives and a foam roller because I love working with our foam rollers. Remember I had to grab the glitter so I'll quickly do that. Okay so how I created this stencil I'm going to show you. Um, I created it using a transparency. So I just picked up these transparencies at um, our local staples. You can get them at any office supply. I myself, I have a package of about a hundred of them. You can get them in a large package. So I make a lot of different stencils for different cards. And it's just a way that you could use your thinlets and your framelits to make custom stencils to do different techniques with, okay? So these are the other two um, beautiful tree thinlets that are in the um, card front builder thinlet that come in the bundle. That's a, that's a, whew. It's a mouthful to say. These are the two here. I have run them on the Big Shot and I'm just going to take out those thinlets out of the transparency. I'm going to get out my little dye brush here. I'm just doing just a little bit of a run here. Let's see if I can help get them out a little easier. So they just pop out just like that. So you can see that is our stencil that we're going to be using. Okay, now there's a couple other pieces here that I did not want to just waste. So I'm going to be using the negative pieces in this technique as well. So I'm going to try with the transparencies. It's a little bit harder to pop these guys out. I'm going to bring in actually my little pokey tool just because it's a very fine plastic that's in there. I'm just going to pop these out quickly here for you guys. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, so there is, I'm just going to carefully lift this out of there. There is one of the pieces. Look at how beautiful that is. All the detail on that tree, hey? And then I'll just pop out. There is our other one there, okay? So I'm going to actually use those to begin this technique on the designer series paper. So I'm going to bring in the pieces to my cards now that I've got our stencil made and I'll just put those pieces of the stencil aside and I'm going to bring in a card base of cherry cobbler that's what we're going to be putting our card onto and then I have got just one uh, piece of the wood texture designer series papers and this has 12 different beautiful wood grains in it. This is the one that I've picked out. It's kind of a on the lighter side. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because I wanted us to be able to see um, the shadowing when we use these little tiny pieces to create 
some masking on the backs of this because that's going to be our first step, okay? So um, I'm going to bring in a foam roller and some espresso ink. And when you are using a foam roller, you want to make sure that you fully roll that roller over the ink pad. You don't want to just dab it because then you'll end up with ink just on one side of your roller, okay? So I give a full roll. And just I want to see how much ink's on there. So I'm going to do a little test on my background here, my work mat. And I'm going to start, I'm going to jump in and get started on the card, okay? So I'm going to use my little um, pieces here that we cut out of our stencil. And I'm just going to place those on the background down on the designer series paper. So for this, you could do two things. You could just hang on to it with your fingers, which is what I'm doing. I find it just easier to do that. If you're worried about them moving, you could always tape these little pieces down with a little bit of washi tape. You just have to kind of rotate where the washi tape is. That's the only tricky thing, okay? So I prefer just to use my fingers. I'm gonna use the roller and we are going to create this little shadow effect. You can see here in the background of the card. So that is the first step to doing this fun background, okay? So I'm gently rolling my roller. And again, you can see how I kind of now kind of move my fingers to the top of the trees. You just use a fingertip to hold that. And I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect because this is just, well, I guess you could call it just kind of pretty background noise in the back of the card here. But it really starts to add some depth to your card, okay? So you can see how now we have got that shadowing of one of the trees. I'm gonna bring in the single one here and do the exact same thing. It almost looks like the design has been burnt into the tree, especially using this espresso or uh, kind of carved out a little bit. I love it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And it's nice with the shadowing that you're still going to see the wood grain because I'm not doing it super dark, but you're gonna see those trees as well. So you're not taking away from the wood grain um, designer series paper. In fact, you're just adding more dimension to it. Okay, so there's that one, love it. Now we're gonna go up top here and I'm gonna add another set of trees and I'm just gonna even out my shadowing a little bit on the card. Okay, and again, a little bit across the bottom. Let's see, take that away and voila. Okay, so there is some beautiful shadowing in the background. So that is step one of creating our little masked off and embossed background. So now that we've got that step done, now we get to get messy. I'm gonna bring in that transparency, the um, stencil that we created, and I'm gonna place that over top of my card. Now, I'm hoping you can see this, but what I'm trying to do is place it so that I don't have it exactly over where I have shaded in the trees. I want to be able to see the shading like this one. I want to be able to see the shading as well as these trees that we're going to be creating, these glitter trees. So I want to be able to see both. So you want to just watch your placement of your stencil to make sure that you're not completely covering up where you've just made those gorgeous shadowed trees, okay? okay I'm just getting out my little palette knife. So with this embossing paste, um, you can get a package of palette knives to work with them. And um, I prefer this one here. This is my tool of choice that I've found so far. But this is the embossing paste and you get a fair amount in this bucket. It dries quite quickly. So you want to just use just a little bit that you need. And once you're done with it, make sure that you close up your little bucket right away, okay? Now, I've just got a little tiny bit on my tool and I'm just gonna start 
in one section here and I'm just going to rub it across my stencil. I want to make sure that I don't um, lift up the stencil at all. I want to make sure that it's nice and flat against my card and it doesn't take much. You can see that I'm scooping away the stuff that's left around the edges and then just smoothing it over like that. That's all you need. A little tiny bit more for this tree here. And maybe a little bit more. There we go. That's all we need. Then I'm going to lift that up. You can see the trees underneath taking form. Love it. And I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to do a couple trees down here as well. I'm going to do them right there. Now this is where you do have to get it's a little trickier, you know, with your stencil, but definitely doable. You could, if you wanted to, you could map out where you're going to exactly where you're going to put your trees and you could do a full stencil for a full card and cut out, um, you know, a whole bunch of trees on a transparency piece. And then you would have that to use again and again, but for me, I just wanted to have the three on here. And then if I want to, I can just put three trees across a card, which I think would look beautiful, okay? So there is all of our trees. Oh, I got a little bit of extra embossing paste on there. Let's just rub that off, there we go. There is our trees in the background. They're gonna look pretty cool, hey? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in that Dazzling Diamond Glitter and I'm going to sprinkle it over the embossing paste while it is still down. So again, oh, I'm down to my last little bit. I have to refill my bucket here. You just want to just, oh, just gently, i got to pick up my paper here. There we go. Just gently sprinkle the dazzling diamonds over top of those areas that you have put your embossing paste. And those trees are just going to get an awesome layer of fine glitter over top of them, which is going to make them shine like crazy in the background and look like glistening snow. There. I'm going to show you this point of um, what I did for the blue one as well. So remember I showed you the two different blue cards, or the, the two cards and one of them was blue. This is what this point looks like on the blue. So I'm just gonna let that dry for a minute and I'll just show you that if you wanna do a version in the blue, this is Pool Party cardstock that I used for this card, this one right here, okay. And again, I, the ink that I rubbed over top of this with the foam brayer was Island Intigo. So again, I just used the trees, placed them down, used an Island Intigo on the sponge roller, rolled over top, and then did the stencil with the glitter and the embossing paste. So that is what the blue looks like at that point, just so that you know. Um, I'm also going to show you a couple other paper saving tips that I've got for you because I, I, you know how I hate to waste. Um, often you don't see this on my cards, but I will use the under part of the layers that you don't see to cut out pieces that I need for my card. So the one that we are going to be using today, this pieces are cut from the layering square um, framelit dies. And because you're not gonna see the under part there, I went ahead and I cut out the two little deer that we're gonna be using for the card out of the center of that. So again, it just saves paper. It means that you don't have to cut into, say a fresh sheet of espresso or whatever paper that you're using um, to cut out the little reindeer. And for the blue version, I did the same thing. I used the layering circles. And I did the same thing. I cut out the deer from the layering circles and just put it over top. Okay? And again, you don't see that. Okay? The ink that I used to stamp the saying on the blue card is Island, uh, Island to Go. 
And I'm going to use the espresso for this one. So we will get started to stamp that main piece now. Now, um, while we're talking about framelits and thinlets, what, you know, lots of people say, well, what's the difference between a framelit and a thinlet? Um, thinlet dyes are often dyes that um, have a lot of detail in them. So the ones that we're using today are more detailed edges as well as intricate, where have I got it here? Intricate little pieces like this. So those are going to be called your thinlets. Framelits are more pieces that are just your outline, outside kind of layering pieces. Um, they don't have a lot of detail to them. And so that's why they're called framelits because they often frame in um, sayings and images that you stamp, okay, or that you're working with. So I have inked up, I've got glitter everywhere, inked up my uh, decks of deck of hall, deck the halls stamp um, with early espresso, and I'm going to stamp that in the middle of my square. There we go. With the espresso. Now, as I was creating this card, I wanted to add a little bit of red and bring in that cherry cobbler um, that we're going to be framing the card in, with the card base. And so I added another stamp from the stamp set, which are these little ornaments. And I just wanted a little bit of red on that centerpiece. So I think that does the trick. Now our little base here should be all dry. It is ready to go. So I'm going to start um, assembling the card. I am going to add my thing onto that layer, scallop square layer. And again, where my reindeer or my deer were cut out of, you're not going to see that. So I'm just going to pop that over top like so. And I'm going to take this piece and I am going to pop it down on my card. For this one, I went a little bit over the edge. Um, I often like to do that. It just, it just makes everything not so boxy. There's some cards that I like to have kind of like the square and then another square, that sort of thing. But for this one, for one thing, I didn't want to cover up all the beautiful detail in the background, but I just... Every once in a while I get tired of, you know, just the plain lines and um, so I like to go outside the lines. Step outside the lines, that's what I'm saying. Just go for it because it's amazing what you come up with. And I just need to reach for my scissors. Okay, so I'm going to just trim off that little edge that's over, that's outside the lines there and square it up perfect now i'm going to bring in a piece of the new cherry cobbler ribbon so this is um, our stitched ribbon double stitch ribbon and you could really use you've got x's on one side and you've got lines on the other so you could use either side um, to create with your cards i like this um the kind of X's on my uh, card I'm doing today. So I'm just, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm adding um, the adhesive to the back of my ribbon. I love to just push the ends down on a glue dot. Um, and then I do it right on the glue dot because then I don't end up with the glue dots all over my fingers. And when I'm adding ribbon to a card, I find glue dots tend to hold it the best. That's just my preference for adding any type of ribbon to a card. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna add that onto my Cherry Cobbler cardstock base. And again, I'm gonna pop it up. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of dimension on there. corners off. So there's a lot of detail on this card with building up those backgrounds, but I think it is 
totally worth it. And it is a great way to get creative with your embossing paste. Um, and in the end, all that detail didn't take a huge amount of time. And if you're doing this, especially if you're doing it for um, like your Christmas cards this year, I think this would be so pretty. I love the rustic look to these colors. Um, I would just go for it. If, and if you're doing one, just do a bunch of them. And then that will cut back on the time for sure on how long it takes you to do each card because you just line them up and just go for it. Okay, so there are our little reindeer or our little deer. I want to call them reindeer because it's Christmas, but they are just little deer. And I think that is an awesome touch to the card. So there we have it. Deck the halls and with a um, masked and stenciled background. So masking and stenciling, embossing paste, add some glitter, and you end up with a pretty fabulous looking background. Lots of interest and just adds a lot of depth to your card. So there you have it. There is the um, Peace on Earth version in blue and a little deck the halls in rustic. You, um, if you could comment below, let me know uh, which colors you prefer. I'm kind of, I love this rustic look. Um, if you haven't already got the circle thinlets, the square thinlets, the stitched um, or framelets, all of those are awesome layers for cards. If you have got a big shot, like they're my little necessity pack. I, they're my go-to for doing a lot of cards, creating some really quick layers that have some nice detail on them. So um, those are awesome to get and they complement the stamp set beautifully. So if you end up purchasing this bundle that is available now, um, if you end up purchasing it through my online store, which is suephilip.stampinup.net, I do have a bonus going on right now. I will send you out a little pack of six by six papers. Um, this is from the Be Merry paper pack. So there is um, six different designs here. They are double sided. So some six by six papers for you to create with. And um, if your order happens to be over $200, uh, I want you just to place that order, put yourself as the hostess, and get the benefits of getting some free stuff, okay? I will still send you out this little paper pack as well as one of my, I, ha I make little custom card kits, which is um, everything to make four cards, all your layers, all your embellishments. They're super cute. Everyone is totally different, so it's always a, a nice surprise in the mail with a thank you card. So that will be in your package in the mail as well as this, if you happen to place that order, okay? If you are placing an order that is under $200, if you um, use the postcode here, that qualifies you to get all that free stuff. So if it's over 200 bucks, I mean, go for it. Be your own hostess, get some free, free items. Uh, if it is under 200, then I want you to use the host code here and that will qualify you for getting your freebie. So um, I hope you enjoyed that today. I love making that card for you and you know just have a look at the thinlets and the framelits that you've got right now. Get some transparencies and get creative making your own stencils. You can make some awesome um, circular stencils. I mean all the different beautiful thinlets and framelits that we have at Stampin' Up you can make some really great stuff with. So uh, my next video I'm gonna try and use that new embossing paste add some color to it. We're gonna make some really kind of fun cards using that um, for backgrounds and focal points so if you want to subscribe you won't miss out on uh, the next videos to come and you can check my previous videos as well I would love that if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator already I would love for you to um, yeah uh, pick me as your demonstrator and I will you know send you out some bonus items for sure as you place those orders so I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of the day, rest of the weekend, and I will see you again soon. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.